In this online lecture, we're going to talk about different ways that you can express organic molecules. What we've already learned so far is to express molecules using this, the expanded version. But there's a much more convenient way to represent this. We could also represent it this way, which is called the condensed version. Notice what we're doing is we're not showing the CH bonds. We're simply collapsing the hydrogens down so it just says CH4. To make sure you got this, let me show you another example. Let's say you have this Lewis dot structure right here. His condensed representation would look like this right here. And make sure you see the connections here. This carbon right here is this carbon here. And that top carbon has three hydrogens directly connected. And notice on the condensed structure, we have them collapsed down to just H3. If we take a look at the carbon next door here, this one, this is this carbon right here. We notice that he has these two hydrogens directly connected and we've collapsed them down to H2. And lastly, the carbon right here, this carbon is this carbon here. The carbon has three hydrogens directly attached and we've collapsed them down right here. Most of the time in organic chemistry, we don't need to show the CH bonds to analyze a molecule. That's why this condensed structure representation works so well for us. But there's even other notational devices that we should know in organic chemistry. For instance, look at this representation right here. Notice they're using parentheses. We need to be able to interpret what this structure actually looks like from this information. And let me walk you through the reasoning here. Let's start with this carbon right here. Remember, we know carbon likes to be tetravalent, so we're trying to figure out what are the four bonds connected to him. Well, the way we read this is that this hydrogen must be connected to him. That would be one bond. He's also connected to this carbon in the chain here. And this right here, these are two CH3 groups. So how do we represent that? Well, this carbon, let's put him right here. That's this carbon here. And let's put on two CH3 groups on him. This is how we interpret the use of the parentheses in this case. But let's keep going here. That means this carbon right here is this carbon here. And this carbon, notice, has the two hydrogens attached to him. But we read this as he's also connected to two what's called CH2 groups. So what does that mean? That looks like this. Notice in the parentheses is this right here. This comes in handy if you have a very long carbon chain and you just want to condense all the intermediate carbons into just one set of parentheses. So this is another use of parentheses. But let's keep going here. This carbon would be this carbon right here, CH2, making this carbon right here, this carbon. Now notice, look at this carbon here. He doesn't have any hydrogens to the right of him, but we see that he has three CH3 groups. So how do we interpret that? That means that this carbon has three CH3 groups directly attached to him. So that's how we would interpret that. This structure here on the bottom is called the partially condensed structure. So to make sure you got this, let's look at a sample problem. And let me first explain why this is important. Remember, on your organic chemistry tests, it's likely that your professor will ask you a question about a molecule, but present it in this format. And sometimes, in order to answer the question correctly, we may need to look at the actual Lewis dot structure. So let's start right here with this 2. In the parentheses, notice we have two CH3, CH2 groups. And what that means to us is that these two groups must be connected to this carbon. So let's start by writing out this carbon here and let's connect those two CH2, CH3 groups right here. Let's make sure we can make the connections here. These two carbons right here are these two carbons here in this group and these two carbons right here. And the two hydrogens right here would be these two sets of hydrogens here and the three hydrogens here would be these three sets of hydrogens here. Now, going back to this carbon here, we notice he also has this hydrogen connected to him. So let's list that down here. And we can also assume that he's connected to this oxygen right here. 
Again, remember, carbon needs to make four bonds, so that's how we reason our way through. And lastly, this hydrogen right here must be connected to this oxygen here. Because remember, we know carbon makes four bonds because he's tetravalent, and we know that oxygen likes to be divalent, which means he likes to have two bonds and he likes to have two lone pairs. Remember, this is not the only representation of oxygen. It's just one of the acceptable ones, and it just so happens to complete the picture of this molecule. So therefore, this is our answer right here. Pretty soon, this is going to be very intuitive to you. You're not even going to think about this. You're just going to immediately go to the Lewis dot structure. But let me show you one more example just to be sure. Let's draw the Lewis dot structure of this molecule. Well, starting with the leftmost carbon right here, let's write him out. And we interpret the two hydrogens are directly connected to him like this. We also notice he has a double bond, so he'd be double bonded to this carbon right here. And we also see that that carbon has a hydrogen connected to him, so let's list that hydrogen right here. If we keep going here, this carbon would be the next one in line. He has his two hydrogens here, so we'll place them like this. He's also connected to the oxygen next door right here. And let's see if oxygen is going to play a divalent role here. Will it make sense? Well, let's see. We'll put another bond here. We'll put the two lone pairs of electrons. We'll connect them to the next carbon right here. And if this carbon has three hydrogens, we'll place those three hydrogens here. Notice we have a complete answer. We have a complete stable molecule. So this must be the Lewis dot structure. Your organic chemistry textbook will have many sample problems involving this skill. Please make sure you do them.